Welcome adventurers. I'd first like to apologize for the length of time between these last two videos. I work full time as many of you know and that full time work sometimes is more full time when you have staffing issues and uh, equipment failures. But I turned some old bottles into these kind of chemical storage tanks. I work in biotech. Synthetic media comes in these bottles. It's just a powder of various chemicals that are used to synthesize the use of serum so it relies less if at all on the farming industry in order to produce biotech components so taking those bottles I decided I wanted to have a six inch platformer going across the top and I wanted them to be hexagons if you'd like to see a very detailed version of how I make hexagons feel free to watch my best performing video uh, my Ashlands waste terrain video it's uh, really good I think and apparently a lot of other people did too because it's gotten watched like every week since I put it out but yeah start by making a six inch circle and using that same radius of three inches you go to the edge and you make a mark and then you go to that next mark and make another mark and you continue around until you have the various corners that are on a hexagon then you take a ruler and a pen or pencil and you connect those lines. It's not terribly difficult. Um, I show it in very good detail in the previously mentioned video. But here you can see I'm just connecting some lines. And then I'm going to take my Fisker soft touch locking shears and cut it all out, which is nice because since they're 8 inch, they can go down the 3 inch sections of the hexagon with ease. I want to make sure you got a close-up view there. I was going to use my sculptor's mesh, uh, but decided I wanted to use my drywall mesh instead. It's cheaper, it's quick and easy to use, it doesn't leave sharp edges. Uh, you get like a hundred feet in a roll, so it goes a very, very, very long way. It makes a nice grid mesh pattern, kind of like diamond plate or expanded steel plating. Just like that. Now I wanted some trimming around the edge, so I take one centimeter uh, cuts of the same medium density cheap chipboard, if I could talk today, and glue them in place. I do a long one on opposite sides and then fill in the gaps. Here I've marked out on the bottom where I want the lid of the bottle to connect, so I want to make sure it's centered. And of course using super glue to bond plastic to cardboard, I obviously stick it together. Now, since a lot of you don't really seem to care about my 3D printing, I did 3D print ladders and a few other details for this, like railing. Um, I didn't go into a lot of detail on how I designed it and all, but I made these, and they uh, will be in the final product. Now, here I wasted a lot of time trying to do something I thought was going to be really cool. I was going to make hexagonal bases that were recessed, and so I used all this fancy-dandy foam and my Shifting Lands foam cutters and was able to successfully cut out the circles and because I don't have a caliper I wasn't able to get them accurate. So if you'd like to see me waste more time, resources, and energy subscribe, like, and share and of course if you want to help support my waste of resources uh, there's a Patreon link in the description. Here I'm making outrigger feet for it since my base idea didn't work out the way I'd hoped use some uh, I-beams from uh, some of the various model making companies. Take some one inch squares, glue to the base. Using model glue I glued the two pieces of plastic together. And here I waste time trying to use EVA foam as my hatches. I didn't like how they looked. I don't have a circle punched, cut out perfectly good looking circles. So scrapped that idea and 3D printed some hatches that I also designed. Here I'm making some clips, uh, inserts, for the bottom of the tops of the platforms. I'm only putting them on three sides, opposite, opposing three sides, so that way uh, I can link them up however I want. The non-connectable three sides, one will have uh, a ladder and the others will have rails, so that way it can, well I guess it's only two sides actually that I've put that on, like you see here. So, hatch, rails, rivets from little 
glitter pieces. And there you go. Not terribly exciting, but it's starting to look like something now finally, and that's what I appreciate. This is like my favorite part of the build when it's a thing. So I tried a different painting technique this time around. And that painting technique uh, was an intent to make it look aged. So I took the base color that I wanted, big kind of soft bristle brush. I made sure it was nice and, and wet. And then I'm, I just kind of streak it down. Uh, I always go top to bottom, as you can see there. And then I come back with a sponge and fill in large sections haphazardly. So it looks like the paint is not only faded, but chipped off over the years. Obviously the other parts that are connected to it, I want them to be a metal. So black is the great stand in for metal when you don't want to use a lot of metallic paints. But I do use some on the hatches. Both the ones that are smaller on the top and the one on the side, they're the same hatch. I just printed it at a different size for each one. And I paint those in, of course, afterwards because it's a lot easier and a wash and again always top to bottom on this so that way it's streaking down i went over it a couple of times with that here's the ubiquitous dry brushing of worn metal using silver craft paint go over anything that's black and metallic that you want to have some worn looks to it and make sure to shake your entire workbench when you're doing that because you have to be aggressive in order to get it done of course, you can immediately see it bringing out the rivets and the, the great details, as well as the great details. Of course, some chipping effect using black paint, a sponge held in a pair of tweezers. Pretty simple technique. I picked it up a long time ago. And of course, dirty down rust. I love, love, love dirty down rust. It is an amazing tool. And though it is expensive, a little goes a long way. And it is totally worth it. Um, You'll see in the end results how well it looks. But you know, put it around, drag it down. While that's drying, I wanted to thank my uh, novice characters, HM Girl Potpourri, Ryer Tonic, Ian Clark, and Jesper Karkov, and as well as my legendary character, LAJ. Without their help, a lot of this wouldn't happen. See what I mean about the Dirty Down Rust? Great streaking effects, very natural looking rust, especially where you put the chipping. I painted these in four different colors, a off-white, a yellow, kind of a green, and a light blue. Some of it doesn't come out as much, so that's actually the blue one. For whatever reason, it looks white. Funny how that works out. And of course, catwalks to connect them. I didn't show the detailed construction of those because it's just like the top platforms. So, nothing very exciting there. And there they are. As you can see, they can be butted up to each other in a number of configurations, giving you height advantage as well as fall potential, catwalks to connect them. A couple of angles on those catwalks. Obvious ladders to get up and down. A few close-up detail shots there. Obviously, it's a very basic configuration with characters on it now. Can't tell if you don't have something for scale, right? But obviously, you could put this in any orientation you want. It fits on the road base that I also built. I think these turn out really cool. Well, I hope you've enjoyed watching today. Now go have an adventure in crafting.